Hi folks, my name is Jim Salmon, and I'd like to welcome you to the Salmon Ranch Cowboy Cooking Show with my good buddy, Tim Mexic. Hi good Tim, how you me. doing buddy? We have an absolute feast for you today, folks. We're gonna do baby back pork ribs, low and slow on the Komodo Joe for hours and hours. We're also doing beef ribs on the LG 1200 Black Label Louisiana Pellet Grill, low and slow for hours and hours. Perfectly controlled. We're also doing bacon wrapped asparagus, baked uh -huh. beans in the Dutch oven, and uh, a roasted root vegetable. Yeah, I'm gonna do roasted root vegetables in a cast iron skillet uh, with a beef stock reduction, caramelized. It's going to be just like pot roast vegetables without the pot roast. Oh, wonderful. We're also doing a summer cerveche salad with shrimp and a dessert you're doing? I'm going to do a Dutch oven cheesecake drizzled with Luxardo cherry oh, syrup. Wow. So this is going to be good. All right, let's head over and get those pork ribs started. All right, folks, we're going to get our uh, baby back uh, pork ribs up and going here. We're going to use two ru uh, rubs this morning. We have three racks for the Salmon Ranch Cowboy Cooking Trail Dust that we use here, and uh, three on a barbecue cactus dust mesquite flavored rub. So, mm, aren't they good? good. And so, those, those are fantastic looking ribs. Th Jim. They are. They're baby backs. They're the best you can buy, and it's always about the quality of the cut of meat. You always want to get the best you can. Now we have, uh, Tim and I spent about 20 minutes taking all of the membranes off. Yep. And some are easier than others, but when you cook ribs, you definitely want to peel that membrane. And what you do is you get a little knife and you start on the membrane and grab it with a piece of paper towel and it pulls right off. So that's really important. The paper so, towel is really the key because that gives you the grip to be able to grab it. You roll it a little and pull it right off in the yeah, membrane. Yeah, there you go. And uh, what, what happens if you don't take the membrane off, then the rubs can't penetrate the backside of the ribs. So you want everything to be in there. So we're going to put on some of this Salmon Ranch trail dust and, and then we're going to rub it in. You know, you don't worry about your hands and whatever. Come on, everybody uh, everybody rubs it like this and, and it cooks enough to burn off any germs you might have. So don't worry about that stuff. And don't spare the rub. I mean, come on, get it right on there. And we're going to uh, cook these and spray them down with some apple juice as we go along. And You can spare the rib, but you can't spare the rub. There you go. All right, so we'll put that in there like that. And it always makes a mess until you get it in the grill, but you know, who cares? These racks are amazing. I mean, they, they, they let them cook vertical and that that's really enhances it. This is an official uh, LG 1200 black label type of accessory here, even though we're putting it in the Komodo ceramic drill here, but you can get all kinds of rib accessories, especially when you're cooking a bunch of it. Um, it's easier to have them all organized so they're not on top of each other and you rub that all in there and now that rub that, that's a that's a deep held secret isn't that, it? That is a deeply <laughs> held secret you know I, I almost have to kill you if I told you. So we'll do one more with this and then we'll switch over to the cactus rub. That's the best stuff right there. Yeah. So all right Tim you can get the the mesquite rub out. That's a sweet. Yeah, you can tell. I mean, it's that's a good sweet. Yeah, rub that right in there. Brown sugar. Ooh, yeah, all right. So we'll get this. Uh, put some on the ends here too, and uh, we want to get a nice bark going on there. And so okay. Now, if you don't have one of these fine rubs, a good basic rub is brown sugar, salt, pepper, and paprika, all in equal parts. Yeah. And, and you know, you can, you always have them in the house, so you can always do these ribs. Look at that color on that rub. That You just know that that's going to be cool. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. All right, it's time to get these uh, beautiful baby back ribs on the giant Komodo Joe. Set that right down in there. There we go. Perfect. We have a, uh, a pan in there that's filled with water. And I always pour a beer in there. I don't, you know, I don't know whether it does anything, but it makes me feel good. And so it keeps, keeps the ribs moist. So this, even though this is a 24 inch, one of the biggest, if not the biggest ceramic grill you can get, I can control the temperature within five to 10 degrees, which is great. So we're gonna put it on about 250 and we'll see you in about five hours on this one. It's gonna be good. 
All right, we're back and we're going to get our uh, beef ribs up and going. We're going to use a, a Texas rub today, which is just coarse salt and lots of fresh cracked pepper. So we'll uh, we'll get these bad boys. Nothing beats the basic seasoning. Oh salt yeah, are you kidding? Mm -hmm. hey, even chicken, salt and pepper in the oven. So what we're doing too is is uh, low and slow to about 210. You can't have a medium rare short rib in my opinion. So there you go, Tim, there's your first one. These are fantastic beef ribs, Jim. Oh, Look at the meat on them. Yeah. The marbling. Mm -hmm. These are gonna be great. We got an open fire going in there. Yeah. We have to calm that down a little bit. All right. There you go, buddy. This is an assembly line here. And I'm gonna put a probe in here. And that way it'll be able to start reading. Yeah, we need to get these to about 210 internal temperature. And the easiest way is to get a probe in there and so you can tell how things are going along. So, mm. yeah, get that rub down. Oh, that's gonna be great. Don't you love that bark? Mm. Yeah. I mean, when the fat renders out of that, that's like meat candy. Oh. And what will happen is you might find a little bit of a stall here, too, uh, in the yep. middle as things, not quite as much as a brisket would, but... Uh, well, when meat cooks, especially if you're cooking a brisket, it gets to that certain temperature when every, all the proteins and everything start breaking down a little, and the meat actually perspires. All right, up next, bacon-wrapped asparagus. Whoa. All right, this is one of my favorites. Bacon wrapped asparagus. Okay, so we take the uh, asparagus, it's fresh right out of the ground. Uh, we take our trusty cleaver. If you're not cooking and cutting with a cleaver, you need to get one of these. And you just take the end off so you're not, uh, you don't have any crust on there. And what I do is I spray them down a little bit with some uh, extra virgin olive oil. And then you take your bacon. This is so easy, a baby could do it. There's always something in every one of these shows where a baby could do it, right? So you take your uh, your bacon and you just you twist it right along like Spiral that. Wrap it. Spiral wrap it. Yeah, is that what it's called? Yeah, thanks, Timmy. And uh, you put that in there like that. And that's all there is to that's it. That's all there is to it. It's real simple. You can also do this with carrots, and um, the the carrots are really good, especially if you drizzle some maple syrup on them. Oh, boy, is that good. We do that here at the ranch, too. You know, a lot of people shop for asparagus. They'll pass up the bigger pieces like this for this because they're just steaming it. Absolutely but, but perfect for the barbecue, for this. these are perfect, so you yep. probably won't have any problem finding them. Yep. I always leave the end out because they get nice and crispy. I love those ends. Burnt, burnt end on anything is a good thing, you know? The extra thick cut bacon, yeah, that might be a little harder to find. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> we did try it once with uh, uh, extra thick bacon, and the bacon kind of overpowered the, the asparagus, <laughs> if there is such a thing. Yeah, bacon overpowers everything, but this is wonderful. In a good way. Yeah, in a good way. Right, towards the end, you got to be careful with your, your toothpick, because sometimes it just... There you go. Wrap that right around. And look at those. Those are ready to go. Mm -hmm. All right. Whoop, got another one there. There we go. Okay. So before we put those on there, we're going to hit them with a little bit of salt. Just a little. We don't want too much, just a little bit. And some nice, fresh cracked pepper. Not too much again, just enough to give it a little bit of help with that bacon. Bacon and pepper. Mm -mm -mm. I was just gonna say, pepper, pepper goes good with bacon. It sure does. Oh, pepper we got it. bacon. There's always one that has a wild hair there, so we gotta get in there and reestablish contact with it. There we go. So we'll put these on. Next up, we're gonna head over and put these guys to the fire. This part's so much fun because we we have what's called an Amish grill here. It's made, there's an Amish store locally here uh, near us, and these are made by the Amish folks. They're very inexpensive, and it's one of the most interesting and versatile grills yep. in our collection of grills, right, Tim? Yeah. You have one, too. Yeah. Uh, All right. Actually made in Ohio. Yeah. And they bring them over here and sell them. Yep. 
So okay, let's get these bad boys on that grate. Tim's going to put them out and, uh, and we're going to finish them off with something pretty special uh, to make them magical. Ooh, look at that. Now this is something that you need to tend. Uh, you need to pay attention to it and turn them over and, and what we're looking for is bacon uh, not burnt but crisp uh, and then that really really makes the uh, asparagus nice and tender and everybody goes for these and they go just like that at the table. Hey, we're back and we're about to start the salmon ranch version of baked beans in the Dutch oven, low and slow for a couple hours. Gonna be great. We're starting off with great northerns and first up, Tim, we're gonna add some barbecue sauce. So pass that right on over. Okay, and we're going to uh, squeegee that out there. And then uh, we're gonna stir as we go here. Mm, mm, mm. You know, every time you cook beans, especially in cast iron, you can just picture them oh. over a western fire somewhere. Yep, you know, absolutely. Out on, out on the cattle range. All right, up next is some good old-fashioned brown sugar. There we go. About uh, a cup and a half to two cups of, of brown sugar on this particular recipe. Uh, we're doing a lot of baked beans here because we have a lot of wranglers to feed. So we'll get this stirred in. Brown sugar seems to work for just about everything. All right, up next will be honey. Uh, about a quarter of a cup of, of uh, raw honey. And we'll put that right in. That gives it this just unique taste, but not too much. And we'll stir that in. Up next, black strap molasses. And this is about a, a, an eighth of a cup. Um, you don't want to overpower your beans with molasses, but that it gives it such a wonderful taste. A richness. A richness, it's absolutely. Sweet, but, it's, but it's got that roasted caramel. Oh, you're making everybody here hungry. All right, some green peppers up next. Now, a lot of people don't put green peppers in there. Uh, baked beans, but I think we don't do too much a cup or so uh, But it gives it some color and it also gives it a a little bit of that crunch that you love Interesting texture. Yep, and then finally we have or almost finally we have uh, I forgot what this is, but maple syrup. <laughs> maple syrup. Yeah, maple syrup <clears throat> There are so many ingredients in this maple syrup. Uh, we're doing about a half a cup uh, and that will uh, finish off the sweetness of our beans. Now it's interesting the way you do that because you're combining a few different sweeteners but each one has a different flavor to it and it, I bet the combination works wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. In we go. Oh yeah, look at that. There we go. All right, our second to last ingredient here is uh, pork belly with burnt end ham and bacon. So that's gonna go right in the Dutch oven. By golly. Next up, we're gonna put it on the coals. Now we have to figure out exactly how many briquettes on the bottom and how many on the top. Stay right with us. Okay, we're putting our baked beans to the fire. We've got six briquettes, remember, from the top down, not the bottom up, and each briquette's about 25 degrees. So we put six on the bottom. And how many are we putting on top, Tim? We're gonna put 18. Okay. The actual rule of thumb for a 350 degrees is that you wanna do one to three, and you start with the number that's double the diameter of your Dutch oven. This yeah, is 12, yeah. so we're gonna do 24, which is six on the bottom, 18 on the top. Now, the settlers didn't have uh, Kingsford briquettes, <laughs> did they? No. <laughs> no, they didn't. Uh, but they used uh, firewood, you know, they were cutting trees down and stuff back then on the way to Oregon. 
So what do we got there? Four, Three, five, four. six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, we got her pretty well covered here, I think. Yeah, we'll get them around the perimeter. There you go. Stick another one there. There we go. Got that one sticking up. All right. So we're good to go. We're going to cook these baked beans for at least a couple hours. And then uh, we'll get in there and check, see how that bacon's doing and those burnt ham ends and pork belly and all those ingredients we put in. Okay, we're back, and what we're going to do now is some reduced beef stock root vegetables um, in a cast iron skillet. Uh, you could do this over a fire. Uh, we're doing it over the burner because of this wonderful outdoor kitchen. So we're going to get started. The first thing we want to do is add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to a pre-seasoned pan. Mmm, cast iron cooking. Can't get any better. And then what we want to do is we'll start with our carrots. We'll get those started. Uh, next, we'll put the multicolored carrots in there, Jim. Those are different carrot varieties? Yep. Okay. We're gonna turn that heat down a little bit. Next up, we got some potatoes that we've already cut up. Mm. Uh, little multicolored potatoes. Roasted root vegetables. And last but not least, we've got some parsnips. Parsnips? For a little bit of uh, variety in the flavor. There you go. And that's it for the, the vegetables. Now, to season it up, we're going to add some chopped up leeks. Leeks. Mmm. Because you, you can't have vegetables without onions. So what we're going to do now... Onions are great. We're just going to saute this up a little bit in that oil and start getting them a little warm. Mm. Just about everything that's cooked in a cast iron pan, whether it's bacon and eggs or roasted root vegetables or sausage or chili or whatever, just tastes better. Well, these are also going to be caramelized, so... And we're going to let these cook down for a few minutes, and we'll be right back. All right, we're just about ready to take these to the next level. What we did is we poured some water in there so they would steam with a cover over them. They're definitely softened up now. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit them with a little bit more sugar to caramelize them. Ooh. Ooh. And we're going to take our beef stock. We're going to pour that in now. And basically, from this point on, we're going to turn up the heat, leave them uncovered, and we're going to start browning these up. Okay. Mm. And the object now is to get the rest of that moisture out of the pan and just start browning them. And that's going to happen pretty quick. Caramelized pretty much anything, whether it's onions or, or roasted root vegetables or whatever, they really add to the taste. Mm. So we'll let that cook down a little bit, and we'll stop back in a couple minutes. All right. Tim, how did you come up with this? Well, my mom, when she used to make a pot roast, she used to do it in one of those old electric skillets, those West Bend or yeah, whatever, the, yeah. the, the square one with the little metal vents on top. Right, right. And after she cooked the meat and had the juice in there, she would put the vegetables in and just cook them down and put a little sugar and onion and browning sauce in them. And we called them the burnt carrots, but everybody loved, loved them. them. You know, that was <laughs> our, our, great. You know, our affectionate name for them. But they taste wonderful because you got the beef in there, you got the sugar from the vegetables, a little bit extra sweetener, and we're gonna add some browning sauce right now, and you're gonna see what happens to these. This is what you get here at the Salmon Ranch Cowboy Cooking Show. Family, home, recipes, and cooking. Now we're gonna stir that in. And you're going to start to see. Oh what's yeah! Going to Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. Do I have to wait until the table? I guess I better, huh? You gotta wait. Okay. I gotta wait. It's so hard sometimes. <laughs> oh, that looks wonderful. 
Now they got some salt on them, they got some beef seasoning. They're gonna caramelize, so there's gonna be savory, there's gonna be sweet, ah. and they're just gonna taste wonderful. Oh, that'll be great. And you know, to, to pair them up with those beef ribs, you know, you couldn't you couldn't mm, do better. You couldn't do better. Other than maybe those beans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. They're, so they're almost done. They're almost done. We'll be back a little bit. All right, up next, Tim's doing his uh, cheesecake uh, in the Dutch oven. And uh, what do you got going here, buddy? Uh, that's a briquette chimney starter. I mean, you, you can get a whole uh, load of it going, and that way I can establish my 20 coals that I need for this 10-inch diameter Dutch oven. And one of the great things about these tables is the coals can go right on them. Yep. You can cook, and you don't have to bend down so far. This is a wonderful way this to cook. This is what this is made for. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're so, going to pour these out now. All right. And we're going to get our fire going. Oh yeah, that worked wonderful. Look at that. And they're just started. You don't want to burn them down too much because you're going to have to get a one hour burn out of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to put seven on the bottom. Remember, Dutch ovens cook from the top down, not the bottom up. If you load them up on the bottom, whatever it is inside, you burn it. So seven on the bottom and how many on the top, Kim? 13 on the top. 13 on the top. And what we have to do is we have to preheat this before we put our graham cracker crust in there. Ah, okay. So there's our... Uh, Each one of these briquettes equals about 25 degrees. We'll just set that right on there. There you go. And then we'll put our 13 on top and we'll start rolling. All right. I'm not good on math, so 13 is uh, one more than 12, right? It yeah, is. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and you put it around the outside. I don't know about common core, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Two more. Twelve. Thirteen. There you go. So now how long does this have to preheat? Um, maybe about ten minutes. Okay. And while that's doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to make our graham cracker crust up. All right. All right, now we're ready for our graham cracker crust. While that is preheating, I've got everything I need right here in this handy barrel storage area. Mm -mm -mm. I've got one cup of sugar. I've got uh, one pack of graham crackers that have been smashed. And I've got five and a half tablespoons of butter. So all we have to do is mix this together and we'll have our crust. All right. Mm. Nobody in the world doesn't like graham cracker crust, right? I mean, come on. Mm. And this is really simplicity at its best. It is. I mean, to make a cheesecake, it's not all that complicated. Yeah. Well, there's nobody that doesn't like cheesecake either. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Cheesecake is a common language. Yeah, it is. It is. Sort of like bacon. Yeah, yeah bacon. <laughs> bacon. So we're about ready to put this in the Dutch oven. All right, should we open her up? Yeah, we have to spray it first. Oh, okay. So we got to... We should be all preheated. Mm -hmm. Timmy spraying it down. All right. We don't want anything to stick. Yeah, nothing ever well, sticks. <laughs> what we want to do is we just pour it in. Mm. And even though it's it's a little bit warm, what we have to do is just kind of spread it out. There you go. Spread it out even. Kind of flatten it out. And get it to roll up to the sides. Ooh, look at that. Mm-mm. Get it in there even. Okay. We'll put that back on, and this has to pre-bake for 10 minutes. All right. Well, we'll set the clock for 10 minutes. And be right back with the filling. This is the part I've been waiting for. What we're starting out with, we've got five softened packages of Philadelphia cream cheese. And to that, we're gonna add one cup of sugar uh, after we just break this down a little bit. This is real cheesecake from scratch in the Dutch oven. 
You one, can't get anything fresher than this. One cup of sugar. Mm. Uh, three tablespoons of flour. Oh, okay. Uh, one cup of sour cream. Ah, sour cream helps everything. All right. I see an egg there too. Or... We're gonna put four eggs in here. Four eggs? All right. Four eggs. All right. We're gonna blend them right in. All right. And this is gonna take some mixing. There you go. And as we mix it, it's going to soften up. Everything so, good is worth waiting for, you know? Really. Mm. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Now, will that be enough to feed 25 people? I certainly hope so. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah. Look at that. You ready for eggs yet? Just about. All right. We gotta make sure we get the sour cream incorporated. Oh yeah. Now I suppose if you have one of those KitchenAid mixers, you could put that all in there, right, Tim? Uh -huh. But then it would be outdoor. It wouldn't be cowboy. This right? is handmade. Yeah, there you go. Handmade in the United States of America. <laughs> oh, that looks wonderful. Hmm. I can taste it already. And now what we want to do is we want to put in our tablespoon of vanilla. Okay. A full tablespoon. Really? Okay. All right. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Now the eggs? It one, egg, <laughs> one egg at a time. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> you can go ahead and break one in there. All right. All right. Excellent. Now we're going to get the batter in there. All right. Mmm. Oh, look at that cheesecake. Mm -mm. Now, what did you say when this is done? It's going to be drizzled with Luxardo cherry syrup. Okay. Luxardo cherries are... They're uh, uh, maraschino cherries that actually come from Italy, soaked in a liquor. Ooh, we like that already. That's okay, great. we'll get the lid on that. All and right. It has to cook for one hour. All right. One hour and counting. So we'll set the clocks for one hour and we'll come uh, back and check. Move on to the next thing. All right, up next, we're going to check these baby back uh, pork ribs that we've had going low and slow in the Komodo Joe. So go ahead and open her up there. Let's see. Oh, yeah, oh, look oh, at oh. that. Mm -mm. So we're going to spray it down with apple juice, which we do pretty much on everything. Remember, we have the Salmon Ranch trail dust rub on three of these racks and the mesquite cactus dust uh, on the other three. And uh, we'll spray them all down. And that water tray in there has been helping keeping them moist too. Right. Water tray is almost, uh, almost down to nothing. You want to spray them from that angle there, sure. Timmy? Yeah, look and at they're, that. Uh, they're starting to pull off the bone, so they're, uh, they're getting there. Yeah, they are getting there. Mm. Now we're cooking these about 225, and they've been on for four hours already, so we'll... Uh, we're going to decide. We might pull these out at some point in an hour or so and wrap them in butcher paper and put them back in and, and after we spray them down again. So more to come on that. Stay we'll tuned. All right. It's time to take our bacon wrapped asparagus off of the Amish these, grill here. These That's, look fantastic. Yeah. Man. Look look at that. Nice, crisp bacon, but not overcooked. Mm, mm, mm. Boy, these are going to be great. So we'll put these over in the grill, keep them warm. When all the wranglers get here, we'll, we'll have a feast. Oh, smell that, smell that asparagus, right? Do. Oh. Salt and pepper, mm -mm. bacon. It's always fun to have two people working on stuff, you know? It's much easier. There you go. All right. All right, Timmy. That so onto the good. grill to keep these warm. 
We'll be back after this. All right, everybody, up next is a cerveche salad with shrimp. Shrimp cerveche, can't, can't beat it. I love this, cerveche. It, it's a perfect summer dish, and you put it in the refrigerator, as long as you keep it refrigerated. We're gonna make a ton of it, because all the wranglers here at the ranch are gonna want some of this shrimp cerveche. So we start out with fresh Vidalia onions, okay? And quite a few of them. Uh, Moses Coleman, back in 1931, uh, grew onions, and all of a sudden, they were sweet instead of the tart, you know, uh, uh, tough yeah. taste of an onion. Strong. And, and it just started this whole Vidalia onion thing down in, uh, in Georgia. And now there's 20 counties that have Vidalia onions. They're certified. They're the only place in the world to grow Vidalia onions. And uh, it was something about they were stressed for water and uh, low in sulfur. So, all right, up next is uh, the... What would you like, Jim? Let's have those red peppers. These are red sweet peppers. We're gonna mix that in. And then uh, we're gonna do a little bit of green in there too. Keep with the color scheme. So we'll save those for our baked beans. And some fresh cut up tomatoes. Can't get any fresher than that. And then we have one of the ingredients that really makes this pop and that's fresh chopped cilantro. You can't do a cerveche without some cilantro. So I'm going to take a second and uh, mix this all up in here and get her going. While you're doing that, I'll cut up this other avocado. So that's a, an easy way of getting that pit out of there. It's I'll, like a screwdriver. It's perfect. It works great. So we'll get this all mixed up. Oh, look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Avocados, the fruit that comes with a toy. There you are. <laughs> now. One of the keys to, to this is fresh squeezed limes. And you know you could you could use the lime juice out of a bottle, but that's cheating. We just take the limes and, and grind them right down here. And we'll probably taste and add some more too, because uh, you can't have too much lime juice. You might say lime is key. Lime is key. <laughs> now uh, part of this is some fresh kosher coarse salt. So we're gonna put a, a layer on there, not too much to begin with, because we're gonna go back and, and uh, sample it, make sure we fine tune it to where we want it. And then we have some fresh cracked pepper that we're gonna put across the top too. Now that salt and lime juice almost works as a marinade to actually cook the, the whatever your ingredients are in there. That's right. And a lot of times this is done with raw fish. Sea bass is very popular in this. All right. You can, you can use shrimp. You can use anything your heart. To, if you want cooked like uh, we prefer, it, it's perfect. There we go. So before we put the avocados in, we're going to do the shrimp, uh, which is right over there in that blue bowl there, Timmy. If you want to grab that, and then we'll put our uh, we'll mix the shrimp in first, and the avocados are a little more. They're a little more uh, soft, so we don't want to mush them up inside there. So look at those like shrimp. shrimp from the blue ocean. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now normally here at the ranch we do, uh, we'll cook raw shrimp, but I ran across a great package of, it looked great, of already cooked shrimp and just the right size for our salad. And we're feeding a lot of people here today. This will be wiped clean. There won't be one single ounce of this left when we're done. <laughs> All right. Well, when they see the food, they're gonna be even more hungry. There you go. Okay, so take our avocados. And Timmy's already got these pre-cut into cubes. So all you have to do is just take your spoon. Just run them out. And run them right them. out and right into the salad they go. Avocados are great. Boy, you're good, Tim. There's something about them mixed with the lime. Yeah. You know, if you like guacamole, it's it's cilantro, yep. avocado, salt, lime. Yeah, there we go. All right. All the flavors of the Yucatan. Here, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's. Let me just mix that in and see where we are in the quantity department here on the avocado. See if we can use any more in there. These are pretty thin. 
Yeah, actually, we'll put the other two in there, too. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. There you go. All right, I'll mix that up. Will you do me a favor and uh, grind a couple of more uh, of those uh, limes there? We'll put a little more Are lime juice? juice in. Certainly. And then we'll hit it again with a little more salt and pepper and then off to the refridge uh, until we plate everything here uh, at the ranch later on when all the wranglers are done working and bringing in all the work that they've been doing all day and they're gonna be hungry, so. We'll put in one more shot of, of lime juice on there. Squeezing limes is so much, so much fun. Put a lid on this and off to the refrigerator. All right, we're back and you're not gonna believe this. This is just so cool. Well, first of all, cherry bourbon barbecue sauce. Uh, we Thanks. cooked that and taught you how to cook it in the last, last in episode, the first yeah. cooking show or the last episode. Which was the first cooking show. <laughs> and, and now we have a batch that we made up ahead. And this is the, everybody loves the cherry bourbon barbecue sauce. It's just loaded with cherries. Oh, mm. You can't go wrong. Yep, so we're heating that up. And folks that want that on their beef ribs or their pork ribs, they're more than welcome to do that. Just a little word on these little whirly things here. I don't know where we found those, but they keep flies away. <laughs> just letting you know. Yeah. I mean, for whatever that's worth. And they do work. Uh, and, and they do. So, this is the favorite part of anything for me. <laughs> well, you know that. Yes. What are you doing? Speaking of bourbon and cherries, <laughs> we have some bourbon and we have some Luxardo cherries. We're going to actually put the syrup on our cheesecake for dessert. But meanwhile here, we're going to make a nice smoked old fashioned. And we're going to show you how to do that. So, first off, we want to put some ice in the glass about like that much. And uh, eh, about two shots of bourbon. Um, did, I, did I say two shots? A <laughs> little, little bit more. Just a hair more. Now in an old fashioned, you typically have some simple syrup. So we have some simple syrup. It's like 99% of the people don't know what an old fashioned is. A Little bit of simple syrup. All right. It's basically a nice way to enjoy some bourbon. Mm-hmm. Now, which, which yeah, we love right here. You on put the a couple, Ranch couple, couple dashes of bitters, not too much. And next up, I like to enhance it with a little Grand Marnier. Ah, okay. So, just a Ooh. couple drops of that. Ooh, doesn't that sound good. Next step is we're going to stir this for ten seconds. Stirred, not shaken. Stirred. You want to dissolve a <laughs> little bit of the ice in there, smooth it out. And you know, ice when you when you let any whiskey or bourbon on ice, it opens up. It blooms. Yeah. It blooms the whiskey. So we're gonna express a little orange peel in there. Ooh, now we've got some culture. Put the orange in there. Glass right here to the old. Fashion. And the secret, we're gonna smoke this. And you say, well, how are you All gonna right. smoke it? Uh, this ought to be good. <laughs> well, cool. this is what's known as a drink smoker. All right. So we turn it on, we get it lit. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put this cover over the drink and we're gonna let this smoke fill it up. No kidding, <laughs> that's pretty cool. All right, so how long do you let that go? Um, as long as you want to let it sit on there, the okay. longer, the more flavor you're gonna get. All right. And it, take, it takes the smoky taste of the oak burning yep. and puts it into the puts it Puts it into the drink. Yeah. Wow. Now, do we both get a chance to try this? Or? We, we can. <laughs> so we're gonna Come switch on. that, we're gonna switch that around, let the smoke get in there a little bit. All right. And of course, <laughs> we gotta get ready because we're gonna garnish it with a Luxardo oh, cherry. Oh, okay. One? One or two. Okay. Luxardo cherries are awesome, by the way. If you have never tried them, a little, a little on, the, on the pricey side, but, but they are definitely worth it. Now we're gonna garnish this with a little orange twist and 
a bacon twizzle stick. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's wonderful. And there you have it. Wow, I get to taste it first. You get to taste it. Oh my <laughs> gosh, is that awesome or what? Bacon, cherries, bourbon, wow. how can you go wrong? Everything a guy could <laughs> want. All right, Timmy, we decided that we're going to wrap our ribs. Yep. Now remember, we have three racks with one rub and three racks with another rub. So we're going to rub them all together, spray them down, put them back on here, try and keep some of that juice flowing yeah. in those ribs. Yep, okay? that's what though. All right, let's open her up. A lot of people don't know the purpose of the wrap is to actually hold the moisture in. Yep, absolutely. So we'll take, take this one out. Oh, they're tender. They look like it. They, they are look tender. like they're ready. All right, so rib one. They do get a little stuck in there. I can help you pull those. There you, you go. Gotta free them up. Now well, let's see. Rib two. Spray these two down. Get a little of that nice apple juice on there. Mm -mm -mm. Some people use uh, vinegar rubs and and other types of juice, which is fine. I mean, you can apple experiment. cider. You apple can do cider something different. Good. Yeah, cider. You can do something different every time and, and still have the best meal every time. Even so. beer. You can spray them with beer. Yeah, we're, we've are we been known to waste some beers <laughs> on some ribs, that's for sure. All right, so we get this folded up. And we'll flip those over. Okay, back on the burner. And uh, we'll run the temperature back up to about 210 and finish them off for a couple hours. That'll be delicious. All right, we're over at our uh, LG 1200 Black Label of Louisiana Pellet Grill, where we've got our beef ribs. They've been cooking for hours, low and slow. Time to check them out, Tim. Yeah, let's see. Oh, oh wow, look at that. Mm, mm, mm. Those are look at those short ribs. Look how they pulled off the bones. You could no, just you about pull those bones right out. It's so tender. Wow. Boy, everybody's going to love those bad boys. All right, we're well on our way to a feast here at the Salmon Ranch Cowboy Cooking Show. Well, Tim, we prepared a feast. <laughs> we, we did it again. We cooked a lot of food. We cooked some baby back ribs low and Ooh. slow on the, on the pellet grill. We cooked some beef ribs low and slow, succulent and tender. We cooked they bacon, fantastic. bacon wrapped uh, asparagus. And what did you do? I did a uh, vegetable um, beef stock reduction caramelized in a skillet, uh, cast ah. iron skillet with some sugar. So those are going to be delicious. Um, we also have a nice um, graham cracker crusted cast iron Dutch oven cheesecake to enjoy with some Luxardo for cherry dessert. sauce yeah. for mm. dessert. Um, you did two rubs. Yep, we have the, uh, a special uh, mesquite cactus rub and then the salmon ranch trail dust that we did on ribs. We also have a ceviche salad and you know nothing says summer like that. A shrimp salad with fresh uh, peppers and onions and everybody's going to love that. But ceviche is actually a combination of two words, fresh and delicious. There you go, <laughs> absolutely. So now we have all the wranglers here together at the ranch. Let's dive in. Have at it.
have your cheesecake. <laughs> now, th th this is going to be divided by 15, right? Sure. Okay, all right. Well, we're gonna plate our uh, our cheesecake here and Tim's gonna drizzle that Larsardo. Luxardo uh, cherry oh, yeah. yeah, that's gonna be great. I wanna take this opportunity to thank all the Wranglers for all the work you did today at the ranch. I thank appreciate you. it coming out to dinner and those of you that didn't do anything, you're still welcome. I appreciated that. <laughs> so it's all good. And uh, you know what? We'll see you on the next one. We'll see you in the next one. Here, here.